So time now to talk more Gaelic games here on Highland Sport as we look forward to the Ulster Minor Championship, which gets underway this coming Wednesday evening. Donegal, of course, have a tie uh, against Antrim to come. Delighted to say Donegal manager Luke Barrett joins us now in Highland. Look, good to see you. Welcome to Highland. Thanks very much, Ashin. Thanks for having me on. Listen, it's been a long wait for you and your management team, and indeed for the players as as well. Uh, your term last year came to an end at the hands of Tyrone just before Christmas, and you're getting back into the swing of things now as we head, we're, what, we're in the middle of July, so there's been a big gap there. What's the time been like during that that gap for you guys, Look, Yeah, it's it's been challenging, there's no doubt about it. Um, I think that, that lockdown period over Christmas really um, had a negative effect on a lot of things, so it did. But um, no, look, we... We have a completely new squad here. It's 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 going to be very interesting because you know um, we were planning originally for probably a championship around the end of the the end of the year, and suddenly within a couple of days you're told now it's going to go ahead quicker, and then a couple of days later you're out in the training pitch trying to get um, a squad together, and, and eight weeks later then it's championship. So um, it was a very long wait, and then it's happened very very quickly. So um, I think that's I suppose a bit of positive and negative. Yeah, and I suppose the whole disruption and the delays was all based around what's happening in the pandemic and, and COVID-19. How worried are you with the current COVID situation, uh, look, going into the next number of weeks and obviously the fear of this Delta variant? Yeah, look, the reality is we've the unfortunate position we're in with minors as well is that there's no real control over it. Um, you know, we, we try to keep them as you know, informed as possible and the best way to look after themselves and things. But, you know, you, you've got, particularly at the start of it, like you had guys coming from um, all different schools all over the county. You've got, um, you know, parents involved as well, you know, where it's a senior level or under 20 level, maybe they, they could isolate themselves a little bit more from parents and things like that there. Older siblings maybe going out now and socialising at the weekends and things like that there. And listen, there's absolutely nothing we can do about that. And, and I suppose, you, like as I said, young people have to get out as well. But um, it is a constant worry. There is no doubt about it. Um, but to be fair to the fellas, like they have... They have given a very str um, strong commitment over the last couple of weeks, and and to be fair to them, they're, they're none of them um, they're very weary of what's what the implications of, of a COVID incident in the squad. So um, they seem to be looking after themselves uh, well. So please God that can continue. Yeah, uh, from the squad that you had last year that disbanded towards the end of the year, how many players have actually come over and and to this year's squad? Because you did mention at the start of the interview that's basically a new panel. You have has there been many that that stayed around? No, not really. No, there's only been one or two. Um, Oshin, obviously, Luke McGlynn, and, and there's another one, Anthony Corn is involved last year with us as well. And that's just the nature of under 17s this year. Uh, uh, it's different, I suppose, to the former minor years where you might have a carry over. There just seems to be a, um, you know, that it's a whole new group, essentially. Um, and that new group kind of came together over the last maybe 10 weeks. So we haven't really had much time um, working with them in terms of development. Um, but again, as I said, it's it, it's been an enjoyable experience over the last couple of weeks to get the get to know the play, players and and um, and hopefully they'll they'll continue to keep going over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, at twenty level, your own uh, club mate Rory O'Donnell's leading the way as 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 captain, and Jimmy Grant of Termans, the vice captain of the twenties. In relation to the under seventeen group and the minors, who's going to be your captains uh, this year? Look. Ah, yeah, we look. We named the captain there um, a week or two ago within the squad. Luke McGlynn's going to be the captain, um, and Oshin Caulfield's going to be the the vice captain. Oshin from Narossa. Um, so look, the two lads have been tremendous over the last couple of weeks. You know, in in terms of leadership and maturity, well beyond their years. You know, we would have worked with Luke last year, and we would have said that he's. He's a player that you know he just has a real way about him with people as well. So he does both on and off the pitch. So um, listen, they're they're the two boys, I suppose, as the vice captain and captain. But you know, there's leaders all over that group and all within that within every line of the team. So um, I suppose they're just the two that are, are representing the group as as such. Yeah, there's a big group and there's a big spread of clubs as well involved. Look. Yeah, there is. I think we have about 14 or 15 uh, clubs in, involved. Um, you know, I suppose the nature of it, um, we would have found that essentially this group here would have um, missed out in football last year completely. They played one game in the Bunkrana Cup, but was disbanded after that. They played no club football last year. The under-15s would have had maybe one, maybe were on trial period for the 
um, to get into the academy setup that was pulled. They didn't have any football last year as well. So this group here, essentially, you're looking at a brand, uh, a, a group of players that probably haven't really played competitive football in nearly 18 months, and um, bar the couple of, of challenge games and the club football that they've played over the last couple of weeks. So um, it's amazing to see the development rate uh, within even within that couple of weeks. You know, there's um, there's guys that have just they seem to be growing in front of your eyes. Um, there's players that would have been involved last year that aren't involved this year for various reasons, injury, um, things like that there. And, and there's players then that have, you know, over lockdown have completely dedicated themselves to making themselves better footballers and, and they've come to the forefront as well. So there's a really nice mix and balance within the squad. Um, but they're all fantastic young young men who are just completely committed to learning and developing themselves. And, you know, it's, it's for us, it's a privilege to get to go out and watch them um, play football every every. Um, every week, you know, and and it's a really enjoyable experience for us because it comes with from within the group, um, you know, and as I said, it's only been eight or nine weeks, but um, the level of bond that they've developed themselves, as I said, it's it's um, they're running the show. We're just kind of there to support them in any way we can, you know. Yeah, uh, obviously, getting into the championship is a bit unknown for the likes of yourselves and Antrim. You've had no league bases to go on this year. Look, you've had a handful of challenge games. Uh, how do you go about? picking your strongest team for Wednesday night or do you know who your strongest team is at this stage? Um, I suppose the answer to that is no, we don't. Um, you know, we've we've been, we would very much be in a, a way of thinking that every evening that we train is an opportunity for a player to put up his hand and claim a jersey, um, both in the starting 15 or be it someone who comes in um, to finish the game or whatever the case may be. It has been very difficult, there is no doubt about it. Um, and challenge games are that, they're a challenge, <clears throat> obviously. But one of the things that was brilliant for us, you know, in, in, in a couple of games, I think we played a couple, three games of challenge games and every player in the squad has got game time for Donegal. So that's going to stand to the long term development of the players as well. And, you know, hopefully that they're in an environment now that they're learning and, and you know, they're probably been hopefully coached at a higher level and, and they're training at a higher level. And we hope that they'll bring that back to their clubs as well, because that's at this stage group, you know, Yes, it's brilliant to compete for Ulster Minor Championships, and it's brilliant to compete at the, at the top table. But ultimately, what you know, our our long term focus is how many players can we get from this squad into playing in games like Sunday in Brewster Park and the Ulster uh, Senior Semi Final. That that is, and has got to be the long term goal. So for us, it's about creating an environment where these guys can learn and and you know work as hard as they possibly can, and you know. They are challenging us as well. You know, they have high standards and they, they expect um, they have high expectations of us as well, which is brilliant. So, um, as I said, it, it, it is going to be a challenge over the next couple of days to try and put a 15 out that, that you know, and as I said, we, we don't know everything. What we can only do is go on the players that are probably ahead at the minute in training um, and be as fair as possible in that regard. Yeah. What do you know about Antrim football, Luke? Um, I suppose I know a very little. My own personal experience with Antrim and, and, and minor squads, both as a player and, and um, as a coach, has not been very um, successful, and it's been quite disappointing. In 2017, obviously, we lost in the first round to and Bal Buffet after extra time by a point, which was um, gut wrenching at the time. And then, as a player in 2011, I was involved where, where we were, you know, probably look. The reality is, we were outclassed that day. We probably didn't have the work done that we we should have done, but. Um, so over the last 10 years, you know, Antrim have come to Val Buffet twice and, and again, 2016, we were lucky to get out of Corrigan Park. So I suppose there's a slight ignorance to, to the knowledge that everybody thinks that Antrim football maybe, you know, wouldn't be as strong. But, you know, an underage, the club structure up there is very good and the school's football up there is very good. So, the, you know, Antrim minors have um, historically been very, very strong um, and their development squads are, 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 are working away as well. So um, there's a real unknown. We don't know what's coming. Um, we know there's a couple of players that have been really good in schools football over the last couple of years um, and we know that the one game they played in the Bunker and a Cup last year they won convincingly against Antrim so, or against Armagh so um, in terms of that it's very difficult to, it has been very difficult to prepare um, I suppose from a coaching point of view in terms of a player point of view these guys we focus on try to focus on ourselves completely and, and getting our own house in order um, as much as we can. And that's the the, uh, the great thing with minor footballers is they want to go out, they want to play, they want to express themselves. You know, they want to put on that jersey and, and, and 
do their absolute best in it. They're not too worried about, you know, um, tactical analysis of the opposition that, you know, as long as we have our house in order, you know, and, and give them the opportunity and then create the environment for them to thrive, hopefully that um, they can deliver a really good performance because that's what all we've been focusing on completely. Development as much as we can and, and you know, every day that they get better and improve. And, and if we keep doing that there, I think we'll not be far away. Yeah, but finally, there's probably no better way to improve is to get a run on the championship. And I'm sure getting the whole way to the final and battling it out for a provincial title is, is a goal there, look, is it? Listen, th these boys set their own standards, so they do. Um, it's very interesting. I was listening to a, an interview recently with a, another manager, um, Keith Ricken, in the Cork. And, and like you know, people think it might be a cliche. It's not. They genuinely do have high standards for themselves. Um, but they're very weary of of every taking every game one game at a time. Um, we have completely and utterly not looked anywhere past Antrim. Antrim's been the focus since the draw has come, um, and Val Buffet. And I suppose um, these guys are very weary of that. They're they're preparing for this, and and one of the most important things as well is they're looking forward to it. They're excited to get playing football. Like you know, like we're talking here today, and it's, the weather's beautiful. The sun's in the sky, the ground is hard, the 20s are playing this evening in Brewster Park, the seniors are playing on, on, on Sunday, you know, so there's a really good buzz in, in, in Donegal football and as there is an Antrim football, so I can imagine both teams are just getting ready to go now and, and they'll be excited to get out on, um, on Wednesday night. Okay. Listen, look, many thanks for talking to us and we wish you all the best for the Ulster Championship, which starts on Wednesday. No problem, Ashin. Thanks very much.